After Dark. Hello out there, fellow masters of the Nerdiverse. This is Mike G. Coming at you with a brand new segment I just happened to think up out of the blue. And I'm going to call this MOTN After Dark. Masters of the Nerdiverse After Dark. Now, with a title like After Dark, you think that things are going to be a bit more on the racy side, on the ranché side. I don't know what that was. Sorry. I'm literally just kind of thinking of this and wanted to see what you think. And today's topic, I think, is a topic that has kind of played comics since the first Silver Age comics till today. And I think that is proper proportion in comic book art and meaning proportion that makes sense to the character that is being illustrated. Now, this kind of goes in hand in hand with um, forms of cheesecake that has been done in comics ever since, I would say, the beginnings of Wonder Woman being tied up um, to extremely out of control proportions, like from artists such as, I would say, Adam Hughes or even, I would say, not Gene Ha, his proportions are pretty good. But even Rob Liefeld on the other side of the spectrum, there's the infamous Captain America image where his chest is literally exploding out of his ribcage. And the word cheesecake really comes from, it's pretty much a saying of showing to a little too much skin in, in comics. And there was a time where that was acceptable, I guess, to sell books and being an artist myself, I've always kind of tried to steer away from cheesecake. I've never been a fan of drawing it, only because it just seems a, it's always seemed a bit exploitive to me personally. And now I'm not taking anything away from cheesecake artists. Do you have your fun? But for me personally, I tend to draw my characters to be kind of proportional to what their abilities are. You know, so cheesecake makes me think of characters like. She Hulk and Lady Death, and I would say even Catwoman Rogue has been weirdly cheesecaked out sometimes. Storm, Wonder Woman, of course. And these are just where the proportions are just out of control, where the chest is overly ample or the legs are just ridiculously thick or just, just, just a big hot mess, uh, anatomy wise. And I've never been a fan of that because I think for certain heroes to have those proportions and to do what they're supposed to be doing just doesn't make sense. Whereas when you draw a character like Spider-Man, he's not overly muscular. He's he's fit. He's, I would say, toned, like kind of like Bruce Lee. But when, when you draw a Spider-Man and he's just ripped and yoked, it just doesn't look right. You know, at the same token, and I, I don't like when Batman is overly huge she's overly buff my favorite batman illustrations usually come from the uh old school kind of 70s versions of batman where he was a lot more felt you know like the i would say i was not neil adams maybe i'm getting the name wrong but it's just it's the iconic costume where he has the blue the light the light blue cape with the with the slate gray suit. And he's very, it's not thin, but he's not crazy insane. The dark Knight returns Frank Miller, just re- like a brick shit house. Uh, this being after dark, there is going to be some ex- splitives flying, but I'm not going to try to swear that much. Cause I don't do that normally in my day to day. So if they happen to happen, saw we, so I just want to take this time just to reflect on, I would say, proportions in comics and like how to balance that out. If you're an upcoming artist or you like to draw or just like to read comics and just kind of give my point of view on it. Whereas characters like Catwoman and I would say Spider-Woman most likely should probably have more athlete proportions because they're going to be flipping and dipping and doing all types of crazy acrobatics, you know, I don't know. 
whereas, you know, certain artists draw them so out of control, so bodacious that it just takes away from the character. In my humble opinion, there are some characters whose whole, their entire characteristics is based on that, which is sort of like, I would say, Poison Ivy is a character who's who can be that kind of alluring, but also still be tasteful. I think what's the main thing I really want to try to ex- explain mentally here is that I think characters can be alluring and sexy and a- uh, attractive and be tasteful. You can definitely do it in a tasteful manner. And comics nowadays in this current climate have leaned more towards the tasteful side. You should see some of the suits they put in, invisible girl in back in the day during the nineties and not so much during the eighties, but really the nineties and two thousands, some of the costumes that people were running around in were quite much in, you know, different artists of the times have kind of streamlined these suits to make them interesting as well as um, visually stunning, but not so skin showing. And I just don't, it's not a big look for me, especially Tactically, because I like to wrap my brain around character design in a sense where what they're wearing versus what they're doing, you know. So if you're going to be Wonder Woman and you're going to be fighting orcs and all types of mythological beasts, why are you so exposed unless you don't need armor? Then why would you have pieces of armor? It just doesn't make sense to me. I think it should be an all or nothing kind of situation. But that's just me. This is just my humble opinion. And in this After Dark episode, I just wanted to kind of really talk about the design in comics and kind of the approach of design in regards to female characters, in regards to male characters, and why it, just thinking about it more than not enough and are just not trying to cater to a certain demographic can really stretch out the iconic look of your character. And I think the most iconic looks are the ones that are, make a bit more sense. And the ones that are simple, the ones that are simple and and make more sense are the ones that can be revisioned and rethought of throughout the test of time. You know, I think of a character like Red Sonia, who's pretty much just been in a metal bikini for her entire existence. And I'm just like, there has to be more to this character. Of course, there's more to the character, but there has to be more than the character design than that. Look, it's it's become her iconic look, but I think that with a little bit of effort, that design can be redone to be a bit more, I would say, tasteful. And you have characters like Catwoman, whose design has changed very drastically throughout the years. Uh, if you really think about it, with the inspiration, a lot of inspiration coming from the Michelle Pfeiffer Batman return suit of that r- reflective, glossy black uh, stitched together outfit, which is probably one of my favorite comic book movie costumes of all times because it was very original. But at the same time, it just screamed Catwoman. And, and ever since then, Catwoman's design started to go towards that black silhouette, head to toe covered, uh, with the domino mask with the ears and the whip. And Catwoman's always had a whip in comics, I believe. She ever had a cape at some point. But I think that the evolution of tastefulness and design kind of helps these characters become a bit more iconic. Whereas you look at a character like Carol Danvers, who is currently Captain Marvel. For those who have been reading comics, they would know that she originated as Miss Marvel. She wore pretty much a black bathing suit with a sash over her, her waist, which was not as revealing as it could be. But I think the, the the suit that was designed now for her to be Captain Marvel is an excellent design. And I think that's a design that's going to last the test of time, even though that design was greatly based off of the original Captain Marvel, Marvel, uh, who took the namesake before Carol Danvers kind of took up that mantle when Captain Marvel passed away. In the comics, I think in the 80s, there's a whole arc called Death of Captain Marvel. Definitely go read it. But... Back to thinking about the concept of character design and tastefulness in character design. In DC, Marvel, Image, I would say Dark Horse, all the characters have had history. The older characters definitely have had history 
of co- costume revisions to kind of go with the times, you know, especially some of the X-Men. So let's just start thinking of characters and going through exactly their design evolution. So let's take a character like Jean Grey, uh, Marvel Girl. She had kind of just a 70s style mod kind of dress with a belt with gloves and a little um, domino mask. That's kind of the, the look I mostly remember back back when the X-Men first came out, which is definitely tasteful for the time. She It was very 70s. I love that look, actually. And then you think of my next costume for her in my head when I think of Jean Grey is, of course, the iconic Jim Lee 90s X-Men uh, costume. The kind of blue and yellow leotard with her hair in a ponytail with the shoulder pads. And it just makes you think of the old cartoon. That, again, is a very iconic design for her, and it's one of my favorite designs for her. And then I think about the designs for the Frank Quietly, uh, Grant Morrison, new X-Men design, where everyone kind of jumped on the black leather bandwagon when the X-Men films came out directed by Brian Singer, and everyone had the kind of ribbed street clothes, almost X-Men suits, and hers was this all black, uh, just kind of very simple suit. And I think that was actually a good look for her as well. And then there's the Phoenix Force costume, which you can't take away from it. It is completely head to toe uh, covered, but it's so skin tight that she might as well not be wearing anything. Um, may this be the black, the dark Phoenix version of it, the black and the black and red, or the good Phoenix version, the green and black and yellow. Uh, it's just that's the suit that. It's okay, I guess, in regards to design wise. I'm not a big fan of Phoenix. Like, personally, I think the Phoenix was the worst thing to happen to Jean Grey because it kind of shelved the character for many, many years. And it kind of kept Jean on the back. It kept Jean out of a lot of the most iconic X Men moments outside of her own arc, which I argue is one of the best. It is one of the best, I would say, X Men arcs of all time, the Dark Phoenix saga, but it then kind of handicapped one of my favorite X-Men of all time. So I then think about other X-Men like Rogue, who's had a costume, different costume designs throughout the years. There was this big thing on kind of skin tight leotards in the nineties where it's just very like exposy, but at the same time, not It's kind of thinking of like Psylocke where she wears the bathing suit with the sash, of course, and Rogue with the bait with the bathing suit with the skin tight, Leotard with the jacket, with the big, fluffy, white and brown hair. Uh, 90s style. 90s style. And then, of course, there's characters in the X-Men, like the White Queen, <laughs> who's literally wearing lingerie throughout the most of her tenure. And I think of, like, Scarlet Witch, who also only has recently <laughs> updated her outfit. But for the most part, she was also uh, a culprit of the skin tight leotard with the bustier in the in the cape because uh, i guess that's what female comic book characters wear but only, it's not really only listed to female characters this you know there's also male characters who had these issues as well throughout the 90s such as thor had some really funky looks throughout the 90s whereas characters like captain america have really been unchanged throughout the years Unless you don't count like his U.S. agent suit and the Bucky suit, which is just little variations of the classic red, white, and blue. So I guess I'm really just really want to talk about this after dark is kind of how comics costumes are super important to the characters and they help, they help paint this picture of your in your mind of what the character is supposed to look like, and that kind of feeds into the comic book movies, which are all the rage now. And these iconic looks that are super important to the fans who grew up with these characters. Cause when you think Wolverine, depending on when you're born, you either think the brown and yellow costume or you think the yellow and blue costume. Me personally, I'm a big fan of the brown costume, the eighties costume uh, before uh, Jim Lee 
took it back old school and made team blue and made and gave him back that blue and yellow his his inch his uh origin costume they just redesigned it but i definitely love the brown and black and yellow costume which i think is currently in the comics now and it's just i wolverine's one of the most iconic looking characters of all time and it just really breaks down the idea of comic of costume design you know for your character and i've always put a lot of thought when i'm designing a suit are trying to redesign or reverse engineer a suit to kind of base the colors, base the 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 armory, base our lack thereof upon the the temperament, the the mental place, the powers, the abilities of said hero, villain, character. And you can see that in certain designs and in certain ways you're just wondering what happened. Uh where you know, the iconic Spider-Man, right? You can't get more iconic than that. And I do know Steve, uh, Steve Dicko had some pretty crazy ideas of how he wanted to approach that character. And then you look at someone like Maggot or some from X-Men or something, which is like, oh, what's going on? Or even uh, Adam X, the extreme. Or for that matter, even early Cable was just out of control during the Rob Lightfield years where it was Infinite Pockets. In, in giant shoulder pads and all the guns, you know, versus a character like the Punisher, who's just the most iconic look ever. But these things kind of all tied into the heart of the character and it make, what makes these characters so beautiful and so timeless. Like, I think Harley Quinn, for her being a Leotard character, I still believe that she has one of the best iconic looks of all time created by um, Bruce Tim during the Batman the animated series. It, yes, it was a skin tight leotard with the mask, but it was so simple that it's just something that burns into your head, almost like a, like a brand. And even she has had kind of revisions of that suit throughout the years, which kind of didn't really help the tastefulness of it. Cause they always kind of skimp her up, which I think is unnecessary for that character, but that's just me. And I would hope that these characters can get revisions every once in a while because I think it's important for them to have new looks every once in a while, uh, shake things up, as it were. Especially one of my favorite costume shakeups was the black costume Spider-Man, the alien symbiote suit at the time. We didn't know it was the, the symbiote. We just knew Spider-Man had this sick new black, just black and white with the, just the white spider emblem, just so simple, but so impactful. And seeing that during Secret Wars and just being like, wow, what's going on with Spidey, man? And also characters who've had things like that is like Iron Man. Iron Man has had drastic armor changes throughout the years where it just made your, made your jaw drop. And most of the time it's been that iconic race car red and yellow but other times it's been the the silver centurion armor or it's been even the uh some of his other buster armors like his thor buster armor or even his extremist armor was a bit weird do you guys remember heroes reborn that weird armor with like the 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 weird pipes in the back (laughs) yeah like these exhaust pipes that's like a steampunk iron man yeah don't read uh Heroes Reborn, just do me that favor, you know. But going back to proportions in 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 comics, proportions are super important because if you don't give yourself a steady proportion, your character is going to be all over the place, you know. Whereas you kind of have to make your own yourself your own little comic bible to this character is built this way and that needs to be steady. Otherwise, they're just going to fluctuate. It's going to look crazy, especially with female characters. You have to kind of give yourself a comic Bible of how this character is going to look. Uh, cause the further you go down in the book, if they're just fluctuating all over the place, you're going to sometimes a character can look 15 or they'll look 25 or they'll be, uh, portion one way, portion another way. And it just kind of throws you off. So. That's super important, I would say, is to try to kind of get that in, idea in your head and stick to that. So going forward in your in your character development and even in your art, you can have that kind of layout. So your character kind of looks the same 
all the time, at least proportionally, because that's a big pet peeve of mine. Uh, I think I've rattled on enough about this. I just wanted to do a quick after dark about character proportions and just overall common costume design. If you like this quick talk and you want to want me to talk about other things just off the top of my head, because this is honestly just off the top of my head. Uh, let us, let me know on our Twitter, which is at M Um, you can definitely reach out to me or winter and see if there's another after dark you would want to listen to and what particular topics you would like for me or winter to broach this time. It was me, your best friend, Mike G. And I would thank you for listening and remind you to always turn off the lights and light a candle. Akira. The dog.